The cylinder on the end of a cable is sitting there, hmm. useless as it might seem. In fact, this is a ferrite bead that assists with many electrical wires to reduce electromagnetic interference. Electrical wires act like unintentional antennas, broadcasting the EMI. There's a reason why the spinning wheel inside their microwave is circular. A circular object will evenly distribute the heat as opposed to a rectangular and square one. When you place containers of these shapes inside, the energy is focused on the corners rather than spread evenly like in a round container. The temperature gauge on a toaster is commonly used to determine how crisp you like your toast. But the other, more specific use for the gauge was for the different types of bread. White and sweet types of bread heat up much faster as opposed to heavier brown and rye ones. The older bread is, the more time it will need in the toaster to ensure the golden brown result you're looking for. Most ovens give you the option of leaving the door ajar when broiling a dish inside. You probably think the goal here is to help cool down the oven after use. In reality, its purpose is to focus on cooking the top of the dish and to ensure a crusty layer. Controlling the buildup of heat and steam by releasing it through the slightly ajar door gives you the desired result without cooking the entire dish to a crispy end. You probably have noticed that your dishwasher has specific areas for different types of cutleries and dishware. But all the dishware pieces should be facing towards the center and not all in one direction. What types of foods were on the plates will also determine where they should be located in the racks. As the middle of the machine gets the strongest spray, carb-based stains from tomatoes and potatoes should be placed there. The detergent is more focused on the outside during the clean, creating a waterfall-like cleanse. That's why protein-based stains, like from eggs for example, should be stacked there. Ceiling fans push cool air down on a hot day, circulating the room. But they can serve you during the winter just as effectively if you flick that switch on the side or use the pulley. So if you want to save some money on heating and try to quickly warm up your room on a cold day, turn the fan on. It will push the air up and spread the warm air around, more effectively warming the room up. Do you still use sticky notes instead of those fancy new apps on all possible gadgets? Welcome to the yeah. club. Regardless of what you use them for, they can annoyingly curl up. If you've had this issue, it's because you've peeled them from the bottom upwards. Doing it this way causes the curling. Peeling them from the side will ensure they remain flat, ready to remind you of your daily tasks. Did you know that can openers weren't invented until 50 years after preservation cans had been readily available? So how would it be possible to open a can? There are a couple of alternative methods just in case you've misplaced your trusty opener. All you need is a metal spoon. Set the can down on the counter. Hold on to it firmly and grasp the head of the spoon tightly. Apply pressure and vigorously rub the edge of the can's top over a small area. It takes time, but as you continuously rub, a small indentation soon opens a hole. Once the hole is wide enough for the spoon's tip, pry the lid upwards and keep going along the edges until you can finally access the hard-earned meal within. Most toilets rely on water pressure and gravity to function, so a power outage will not affect them. But if yours does need electricity to function, you must be worried about using it when the power is out. The good news is, the power is only used to fill the toilet and not to flush it. As the flushing mechanism will still work, open the toilet tank and pour in a couple of gallons, and you're free to flush away whatever you need to. Blockages in shower drains occur over a long period of time. It's inevitable. We lose 50 to 100 hairs a day, and many of them will endeavor to reside within our shower drains. Hair only forms the foundations of the blockage, and this attracts the buildup of various other things. A great life hack is to use your vacuum cleaner and put the nozzle in the hole once removing the plug. Apply a wet cloth around the nozzle, ensuring air cannot escape. The vacuum will suck up the blockages a lot easier. This will help avoid any extra cost from plumbers, as they themselves use this technique. 
To make your candles last longer, trim their wicks multiple times and keep them as far away from water and moist as possible. It will guarantee that your candle's wax stays firm and steady and continues to burn slower for a longer period of time. The empty space between the panes of the oven door is there for a reason. You can stick a brush in there to clean the oven door glass. It's easy to access this space through the bottom of the door, open the lower shelf, then push the brush through the hole. While you're parking in a garage, you might find it difficult to determine how close to it you need to be. Not all cars have sensors ensuring you keep the right distance before the bumper makes an indentation on the wall. Applying a rope with a tennis ball from the ceiling at the right distance will help you learn the best distance to park from the wall. We've all been told to loosen a lock with WD-40 or lubricant. Yes, we all know we should have these around the house. But in case you don't, a great alternative is drawing with a gray lead pencil along the edges of the key and then putting it into the lock. Continue doing this until the keyhole has been adequately lubricated and the key functions smoothly. Pliers are prone to damage when you use them to adjust faucets and shower heads and are also difficult to grip. Take a couple of pieces from the end of an old garden hose and attach them to the jaws of the pliers. You'll find a huge improvement wow. with grip and will avoid wear and tear. You can find a good use for discarded rubber for different things around the house. When fed up with tightening or loosening with a screwdriver, try using a simple rubber band. Place part of it into the screw grip and the screwdriver will have far greater traction. Moving cement blocks isn't safe for your lower back. Even with a wheelbarrow, it can be a risky process to place the cement onto the ground without causing damage. Three simple cylinder pipes can make a world of difference, regardless of the size of the block. Try lifting the edge onto the first pipe with a pry bar, then pushing and maneuvering as you gradually direct the three pipes towards the desired location. Just make sure you're not doing this on a slope. That first strike on a nail can be a great success or will result in a throbbing thumb. A bobby pin is perfectly shaped to hold a nail in place, allowing for your hand to be clear out of harm's way and for you to strike the nail without fear. Use a crayon instead of a pen or pencil while working with a wet saw to ensure the markings are not removed. They will also be easier to see under the murky water. Checking the drains on the roof and determining when they need to be cleaned can take a lot of time. Using duct tape, attach a mirror on the end of a long broom and review whether the drains need to be cleaned. To further assist with your balance as you check on the gutters, attach a pair of old trainers to the end of the ladder. The spread of the shoe and its grip will ensure a further level of safety. Liquid caulk normally comes in huge tubes so you can never use it all at once. The hardened tips of liquid caulk create blockages. Grab a used cork and drill through it to make a perfect lid, concealing the liquid caulk. Now it's ready to be used again with no blockages. Hey, have you ever been vibing out in your room, listening to some of your favorite songs, admiring the subwoofer of your speaker as it delivers magnificence to your eardrums? We all have! But have you ever asked yourself why that same speaker, along with other speakers across the globe, is almost always black? Some of you are probably screaming at your screen right now about your speaker being green, red, or any other color found in the rainbow. Number one, I said, almost always. And number two, if you look closely at the gorgeous design of your brightly colored music player, you'll often find that the speaker beneath it is still colored black. One possible explanation for this is that the original technology of speakers had a diaphragm with black particles on it. So as soon as a sound is amplified, it sends a charge through the diaphragm and these black particles are driven upwards. The carbon particles bouncing and touching the upper membrane of the diaphragm are responsible for creating some of the distinct sounds from our speakers that we all love so much. Speaker manufacturers must have gotten tired of their products changing color with prolonged use, combined with these black particles settling on the upper membrane of the diaphragm. So their logical solution was to color most speakers black. Another more practical belief as to why speakers are mostly colored black 
is that it's a hue that easily matches up with many types of decor. Walls, furniture, and clothes all often look quite well when combined with this color, which is why it's so prevalent everywhere you go. Listening to music has repeatedly scored in the top 10 pastimes in the US based on research. Nowadays, you find sound speakers everywhere. In your television, laptop, and your phone, you can't escape them. But let's take a look at how they started off. Their origins are in radio and telephone technology. The first form of a speaker was developed by Johann Philipp Rice in 1861. The German was a self-taught inventor and installed the speaker on his telephone. It was just about able to reproduce clear tones, but it could also replicate muffled speech after a few revisions. Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, decided to try and produce an improved version of Rice's speaker. Essentially, Bell and other inventors wanted to make an electrodynamic speaker. By 1877, it was still yet to exist. But due to the desire of inventors worldwide to change this, research confirmed that it was extremely possible to make one. In particular, the work of Werner von Siemens, who came up with the idea of an electromagnetic coil-driven speaker, was a driving force in arriving at this conclusion. Why are there magnets in speakers, you might ask? Every speaker nowadays has an electric current, something the inventors were discussing would never have taken for granted at any point in their lives. When this electric current is changing, it produces a magnetic field. To make the panel of the speaker move, magnets are used to create an opposing magnetic field which creates vibrations. These vibrations are the sound we end up hearing. The bigger the magnet, the louder the speaker will be. Another inventor by the name of Thomas Edison from the US had filed a British patent for a system using compressed air for an amplifying mechanism. The first commercial electric loudspeaker saw the light of day only in 1924. The sound quality produced by the speaker was good enough for motion pictures. It took nearly 20 years for the next groundbreaking development in the world of loudspeakers. This came with the arrival of the duplex driver in 1943. It offered better clarity and coherence at high volumes, which was important in movie theaters. Fittingly, it was nicknamed the voice of the theater. The duplex driver was immediately tested by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and instantly made its film house industry standard in 1955. Until now, this loudspeaker design is still used. Indeed, the film industry does seem to put a lot of effort into its sound, and so do the theaters we watch them in. You may have noticed that these buildings often have thick curtains on the walls. These are soundproof or acoustic curtains, and both are much thicker than regular curtains. They will either consist of heavier fabrics that are tightly woven or have better quality linings. This means that these curtains will absorb sound and reduce the acoustic reflection off the ceiling, windows, and flat walls of the room. This ultimately creates a much better sonic experience. The carpet floors are so thick in theaters for the same reason. It helps to trap sound by providing insulation. From a practical standpoint, this carpet is also set up to prevent the sound of footsteps during film screenings. This concept of trapping sound is also the reason why putting a phone inside a cup will make the phone speaker seem louder. Any speaker sitting or suspended in an open space projects its sound in all directions. As the speaker vibrates to create sound waves, an equal amount of energy leaves from both the front and the back. By placing a speaker in some form of enclosure, we can redirect some of the energy that comes from the back of the speaker and project it forwards. By putting the speaker in a cup, you're directing the sound more efficiently. It travels only one way, making it seem louder than what you'd hear when you take it out of the cup. Speaking of phones and speakers, ever wonder why your mobile device makes your speaker produce a buzzing noise? This can occur when the two gadgets are near one another and your mobile is trying to send and receive data. The transfer of information produces electromagnetic disturbances in the medium around the speakers. It creates noise in the audio, and as a result, you can hear the buzzing sound coming from the speaker. A simple way to protect the amazing vibe your speaker is creating for you from this irritating buzzing noise is just to move your phone away from your speaker, or vice versa. 
This will eliminate what is officially known as electromagnetic interference. Research across America shows that, on average, 74% of people own two or more pairs of headphones. 46% of them mention they listen to their headphones for more than two hours per day. Some choose the headphones by their looks, others by the sound quality. In either case, finding the right pair is important, since a lot of people are willing to spend over $100 on it. Headphones have become a true fashion accessory. That's why well-known figures are trying to make an impact in the headphone industry like it's the fashion industry. Music moguls Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine came up with the idea for the now world-famous Beats by Dre Headphones brand. They were walking along the Pacific Ocean one day in 2006, discussing a sneaker deal as they had an offer on the table from a major brand in that arena. After some discussions, they decided they wanted to do something they were more passionate about and landed on headphones. The duo's idea turned into a brand that was purchased by Apple in 2014 for $3 billion. It was the largest deal in Apple's history, and Beats by Dre controlled 70% of the headphone market at the time of signing. The move allowed Apple to take over the headphone space. The release of their popular wireless AirPods headphones in 2016 was another reason it happened. But how did these popular wireless headphones that many of us own actually work? These headphones rely on internal batteries to have enough power to remain wireless. Most often, they have conveniently built-in rechargeable batteries, but sometimes they keep going thanks to standard AA or AAA batteries. They receive wirelessly transmitted signals from their paired audio sources, be it your phone or laptop. These signals are encoded by the source device and transmitted most commonly via radio frequencies or infrared carriers. The headphones receive the signal and decode it to audio. And just like that, it's music to your ears. Have you ever wondered what these extra holes at the top of your running shoes are for? They're designed so that you can tie the shoes in multiple different ways. That's useful when you want to compensate for things such as a bad stride or even a damaged toe. Plus, you can change the look of your shoes the way you prefer. Many people use a dust jacket of their book as a bookmarker. No problem with that, it will save your book from bent page corners. But the primary purpose of a dust cover is to keep the book safe from distortions. For instance, if you spill juice or drop some of the food on your book while reading it. The Tic Tac dispenser has this little groove on its top, so you can dispense only one Tic Tac at a time. Even though, let's be honest here, nobody does that. Most of us just spill a whole bunch at once and then we wiggle all those extra Tic Tacs back in. Those rubber bumps you see between the tire treads are there for your safety. The raised edges tell you what the minimum height of your tread is. If the bump and the edges are even, it's time for you to visit the tire shop as soon as possible. But if the bumps are well beneath the level of the edges, you're good to go. What about that black grating on the microwave window? It's something called a Faraday shield, and it's there to prevent microwaves from getting away and turning the entire room into a Faraday cage. If the microwaves escape, your meal won't cook properly either. So yep, the cage is not there to make it difficult for you to see your meal while it's cooking. It's keeping the electromagnetic energy inside. How about a wrench compatible screwdriver? Cover your screwdriver with the end of your wrench and you can increase its torque. That's why the head of your screwdriver is designed the way it is. When you have odd angles, you can use this strategy. You've probably heard those myths, the blue side of the eraser can erase the pen. False. Its purpose is to erase a pencil. But in case you're writing something on heavier paper. The blue side can remove smudges you see after using the pink eraser too. Have you ever wondered why oranges in supermarkets mostly come in the red mesh bag? It's a trick to make this food look more orange and encourage you to make a purchase. An extra tip, don't throw away the mesh bag. Tie it up so you can have a small pot scrubber to clean your sink, kitchen, appliances, and dishes. You can see golf balls don't have a perfectly round shape. 
Their surface is covered with many little dimples, something golf balls didn't always have. At one point, experienced golfers started noticing how through time, older balls with imperfections, such as nicks and bumps, could travel further. Such things create turbulence in the air around the golf ball, which eventually reduces drag. So, manufacturers started producing balls with dimples so they could go farther and faster. You might have noticed that sometimes there are ridges in toothpick tops. It's more hygienic because when you break that off, you can prop the toothpick up on it and it won't touch anything. Another safety feature you'll find, this time in your car, is a tab on your rear view mirror. With it, you can change the position of the mirror so you don't get blinded if there's a car behind you with its high beams on. So this little tab helps you control the glare of lights coming from behind. This feature showed up in the 1930s, but in the early 1970s, it became a part of standard equipment in most trucks and cars. Do you see that tiny hole on your iPhone right next to the rear-facing camera? It's a microphone, and it's there so your phone can record sound as you turn your camera around. Some cables have a thick cylinder towards the end of the cord. It's called a ferrite core or a choke. It's a magnetic iron oxide that stops high-frequency electromagnetic interference. For example, you know that annoying static noise you get if you bring your phone too close to a speaker? This interrupts your call, which is why cable cords with big cylinders are pretty useful, because they prevent these things. Do you know why nearly all luggage bags and backpacks have two zippers? It's way more convenient and easier to open in that way. But not just that. You can also lock these two zippers together to keep the stuff inside your bags safer. You know how toilets at public spots like malls have those big gaps at the bottom? It's primarily for better circulation of air. This type of door also makes it easier to clean the toilet or check if it's occupied if you're standing in line. Other than that, if you get stuck there and the lock gets broken, you still have a way to escape. You can just crawl out. Ever notice those plastic end caps on utility knives? And they also have scales on them, which indicates you may use them multiple times, but with sharp edges. You can separate the blades through these plastic end caps. Then you can move the slider and bring the sharp blade to the front. If you've ever taken a moment to examine a regular grocery cart, especially their fold-out section, you probably notice those metal loops jutting out. They're designed to protect the items you carry in your cart. You can use them to hang bags with soft items. You don't want to accidentally squish with heavier products, like bread, or easily breakable things like eggs. Many coffee mugs come with curved notches on their bottom. When you're washing your mugs, put them against the rack at an angle in your dishwasher. This way, the water won't pool in there so your favorite cup will be completely dry by the time you take it out of the dishwasher. If you're a McFlurry fan, you've probably noticed there's a square hole in the handle of the spoon. It's there so you can attach it to the special machine that mixes the ice cream and your favorite toppings together. The machine has a bar that slips into this square-shaped spoon and then thoroughly stirs it. And you get the spoon so they can minimize the mess during the process. Quite neat, wouldn't you say? A regular milk jug has a dent on one side. Some might see it as a random design decision, but a dent has several purposes. One of them is to get bigger if there's a gas buildup. This happens when your milk is spoiled. So you don't even have to try to check this out. Also, the dent is there so the jug doesn't burst if you accidentally drop it. The dent allows the expansion space that deals with the sudden pressure that happens when you drop the jug. Dental floss. Sure, it's important for your dental health, and it's easy to assume what you do with it. But dental floss is great in the kitchen as well, because it's a very precise cake slicer. Way better than a regular knife. Most kitchen shears have a serrated opening right there at the center where the blades and handles meet. It's something you can use to trim difficult herbs such as rosemary, thyme, or chives. Because of this opening, you don't need to pick the leaves off by hand, but de-stem them in one motion. 
The majority of gelatin containers or single-serving yogurts come with a tinfoil lid. And in most cases, you can use this covering as a disposable spoon. Just peel away the covering and after a couple of simple folds, you'll have a perfect little spoon for your midday snack. You're trying on a pair of jeans, a dress or a jacket, and are about to dig your hand into the pocket when you realize there's no depth to it. The pocket is simply not there. But why would anyone create pockets you can't put anything in? And uh, <clears throat> now would be a good time to pick your iPhone up from off the floor. Well, the reason for fake pockets is simple. If a clothing item has a specific cut or shape, pockets may spoil it. They can alter the item's shape, either in the warehouse or already on the retail rack. The solution? Getting rid of pockets in key areas. Plus, fake pockets are obviously cheaper, and they don't get stretched out. Interestingly, this practice goes back to the 17th century. That's when pockets were actually removable. They resembled small bags, and women, for example, could move them from one outfit to another. Unfortunately, it was also very convenient for pickpockets. They could grab such a pocket and run off with it. Then, clothes became more streamlined, and slim pockets started to be sewn right into them instead of attachable bags. This was believed to make the shape of a person's silhouette more alluring. But soon, slimmer skirts came into fashion and pockets went out of it. And people started using handbags instead. These days, most pockets are real. But some of them are still fake. So how can we make sure that we don't actually turn a fake pocket into a hole thinking it's a real one? Well, first of all, take a look at the stitching along the edge of the pocket, where it's supposed to open up. If you see a single loose thread, just snip a piece of it and start pulling gently. If the pocket is real, the thread will easily come out. But if you feel that the stitching won't budge, most likely you have a faux pocket on your hands. If this is the case, just leave it be. Now let's move on to some other everyday objects that may be hiding some secrets. For example, those lines on some kinds of chips. For one thing, they help with the distribution of spices and seasonings. In other words, all those substances that make your chips taste like cheese are mostly stored inside the lines. Plus, the lines make chips crunchier. Highlighters are filled with a special semi-transparent fluorescent ink that can glow in dim light. Yellow and light green hues are the most popular because they don't prevent you from seeing the text after black and white photocopying. Photocopiers perceive yellow and light green marks as almost non-existent and don't print them. Now, back in the day, the first jeans had one problem. Workers and miners, who were the original jeans wearers, put too much pressure on the poor piece of clothing. As a result, the seams couldn't withstand the stress and tore. So, tiny metal studs were invented to prevent this from happening. Most metallic zippers have a hidden lock inside them. That's why you shouldn't leave the zipper handle in an upward position. When you pull it downwards, it automatically locks. It's all thanks to several tiny grooves hidden underneath the handle. Now, about those horizontal lines on plastic bottles. They help hold bottles up. Some bottles are produced from soft plastic. Without the lines, they wouldn't keep their shape. Instead, they would twist easily or even break. Bath foam isn't only for fun or a nice smell. It helps regulate the temperature, too. The bubbles keep the water hot, and you can enjoy your bath a bit longer, with or without your rubber ducky. Ever notice that layer of clear liquid and gel pens? It's called the ink follower or stopper fluid. The gel in such pens contains pigment particles dissolved in a polymer solution. The gel should be thick enough to keep the pigment particles suspended, but also thin enough to flow first onto the ball and then the paper. The main task of the stopper fluid is to be a barrier to prevent the gel from evaporating or leaking out. Without this transparent fluid, your gel pen wouldn't function. The fluid always stays in one position and doesn't get dissolved with the gel. Neither does it move backward or flow out of the pen. The holes in the bottoms of your earphones allow air to circulate up and through the speakers. It allows to increase low frequencies, making the bass sound deeper. The quality of the sound also becomes much better. Some plastic milk containers have dents on their sides. Try as they might, they just cannot park without some damage. 
Nah, I made that up. These vents serve several purposes. For one thing, when milk spoils, this process usually causes swelling and high-pressure buildup inside the container. Oh boy. That's when the dent comes in handy. It pops out and doesn't let the jug blow up. Plus, if you ever decide to freeze the milk, it will expand like any other liquid. And then again, the indentation will pop out and prevent the container from breaking inside your freezer. That's a good thing. Airplane windows have rounded edges, and that's a crucial safety measure. It prevents aircraft accidents. Weak spots are usually situated in the corners. If airplane windows were square or rectangular, each of them would have four potential weak spots. Under pressure, they would collapse. If you look closely at a tram's overhead lines, you'll see that its contact wires zigzag back and forth instead of going in a straight line. The thing is that all trams have pantographs attached to their roofs. The upper part of the pantograph is gradually worn down by the overhead wire and eventually needs to be replaced. To wear it down evenly, the wire is not installed strictly along the tram's path but in zigzag patterns. As the tram moves, the pantograph slides along the wire and it wears down evenly. You might have wondered why some gas cans have two holes with caps, one bigger and one smaller. Before, I thought that the little hole was used when you poured something into a smaller container. But Mm. I was wrong. A very infrequent occasion. In reality, you're supposed to uncap it before you pour the gas inside the bigger hole to prevent it from glugging and spilling on your clothes and on the ground. Most of the buttonholes on a shirt are vertical, but the top, and sometimes bottom ones, are horizontal. The reason is simple. These two buttons slip out more often than others. Luckily, producers have found the solution that can prevent these buttons from slipping out. Horizontal buttonholes. What engineering? Buttons tend to slip out less from such buttonholes. Stick sachets of sugar or salt are easier to open than many people think. There's no need to tear off one of the ends. The right way is actually to tear them down the middle. Some boots have loops sticking out on the back. Their main purpose is to help you pull your shoes on easier. Just tug on the loop while you're pushing your heel into the boot. You can also use these loops to hang your boots on a hook when they're dirty or when you want to dry them after washing. Or you can run your laces through the loop if you want to tie them around your ankle. When you're on board the plane, you might spot a little triangle over your seat. Such triangles show the flight crew the best spots to check the plane's flaps through the window, just in case they're flapping. If your shoes are really slippery, just take a bit of sandpaper and rub it on the soles for better traction. They'll become more grippy and you'll be able to wear them out in the rain. Now, if they get too wet, they might turn gripey, but that's only if you have talking shoes. If you drill several holes at the bottom of your garbage can, putting in and taking out trash bags will become much easier. You won't have any problems with suction. You can usually find some silica gel in bags, shoes, and many other things you buy. This shell absorbs excess moisture. Don't throw it away. Each time your shoes get wet, put a few packets of silica gel inside. The thermos wasn't actually invented to keep your coffee warm. It was made by a Scottish scientist who just wanted a safe place to put his chemicals at a stable temperature. So he took two bottles, put the smaller one inside the bigger one, and vacuumed out the air between them. Well, anyway, thanks for the hot coffee. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. If you look at it on the street, you'll think a fire hydrant is about three feet in height. But the actual size of the device used to provide water supply to firefighters all over the world is twice as large. That is, if you count the rest of the hydrant, which is hiding underground. They're mostly red, and it's not just a matter of urban design. First of all, they need to be of bright, easily noticeable colors, so firefighters can spot them fast when they need to. The choice of color depends on how much water the hydrant can hold. It can sometimes vary depending on the location, but here's the breakdown. A red fire hydrant can splash 500 gallons of water per minute, while an orange one at least 1,000 gallons. Green ones mostly process 1,500 gallons of water per minute, and the most plentiful ones colored blue can generally contain over 1,500 gallons. 
Hey bowling fans, isn't it super annoying when your bowling ball gets cracked? Turns out that most of them get damaged because of incorrect storage or spikes in temperature. Now come on and face it, since it's already cracked a bit, aren't you curious what's actually inside the bowling ball? Cause I sure am. Let's have a look. They mostly make the inner core of the ball of powdered metal oxides, like calcium or iron oxide. They mix them with some resin and catalyst to harden the whole mixture. So that light bulb shape you now see inside of the ball is actually its heaviest part. It also influences how your bowling ball rotates when going down the lane. The same goes with spray paint cans. When you shake it, it makes a weird noise. But what is that thing in there? It's called a pea, and it's meant to hold the paint mixture in place and maintain its shape. They generally make it out of plastic, metal, or ceramic. It basically acts as a whisk to make sure your paint is well mixed together before you apply it to your surface of choice. Ever wondered how soda bottles keep that refreshing fizz for that long? Well, they have a little plastic ring fastened to the lid. They place it there to keep the gas from escaping and making the soda go flat, even if you shake it around in your bag the whole day. Speaking of things we use on a hot summer's day, wait, wait, don't put your baseball cap on just yet. Take a look at it for a minute, and you'll notice there's a small button on the very top. Is it functional, or is it just there for the sake of design? Way back when people started using fabrics to cover their heads, some say the button was actually functional. Since it's on top of the cap where the fabric panels come together, the top button helps keep the cap crown in one single piece. Now, with recent advances in fabric and pattern design, the button is more of an aesthetic feature. It's used to cover up the joint point of the fabric panels. Your cap might not have a button at all, but don't you think a cap actually looks better with one? Cotton pads have two sides, and if you take the time to look at them carefully, they're actually different in texture. Just in case you've ever wondered why, the textured side is for applying makeup, and the even side is for removing it. Bookworms, this one is for you. Dust jackets that come with a lot of hardcover books are not just meant to make your book look pretty, they also double as a bookmark. Just fold the pages you've already read underneath the inside of the jacket, and voila! Next time you reach out for your favorite shirt, take a look at the top buttonhole. It should be stitched horizontally, and all the other ones are vertical. Turns out that the dress shirt was designed this way, since the first and the last buttons were the first ones to unbutton throughout the day. They then changed the direction of the buttonhole to ensure the shirt would stay nice and fitted before you're ready to take it off. These days we have so many variations of this awesome dessert that it's hard to imagine we've ever lived without it. You can find different types of cookie dough ice cream or even chocolate chip cookie cake basically everywhere, but the famous cookie wasn't actually invented until 1930. The story goes that a woman named Ruth Graves Wakefield was preparing some chocolate cookies as she was waiting for some guests to arrive. She soon figured out she was out of baker's chocolate, a crucial ingredient for the classic cookies. To fix things up, she chopped up a block of semi-sweet chocolate, thinking it would eventually spread out evenly throughout the batter, given the heat of the oven. Things didn't necessarily go as planned. But hey, it's great they didn't because this is how she invented this modern dessert we now can't get enough of. And speaking of popular snacks, the potato chip is even younger than the chocolate chip cookie. Well, at least historically. There are many stories trying to explain how it was invented. One of them goes like this. A chef named George Crumb, based in New York, put the chips together in 1953. He decided to try a different cooking solution when one of his customers didn't have nice things to say about his french fries. He said they were too thick and kind of mushy. Then, Crumb came up with potatoes that were thinly sliced and fried until brown. People absolutely loved the dish, and they welcomed the first ever batch of chips with open arms. Ice cream, anyone? If the story is true, back in 1904 at the St. Louis World's Fair, one ice cream shop owner ran out of cups to serve his dish. So, he fashioned a waffle into the shape of a cone, and the rest was history. Okay, I'll admit it, chewing gum-like treats have been around since the ancient Greeks. So this one isn't particularly a revolutionary discovery, but the actual gum we buy today wasn't there until the late 1800s. An American inventor named Thomas Adams wanted to mix together different chemicals to create rubber. He tried and failed, for that matter, to play with chicle for his experiment, but ended up fashioning this neat treat. They still use chicle to this day to produce most chewing gums. 
Back in the 1800s, there lived a man named Jean-Baptiste Joly, who worked in the fabric industry as a textile maker. How he came up with this next invention that we use a lot these days has less to do with him and more to do with his maid. The story goes that the woman accidentally knocked a kerosene lamp over onto a tablecloth. Instead of getting upset over the damaged fabric, Jolly noticed that the substance actually made the material cleaner. Figured it out yet? Yep, that's how the idea for the very first dry cleaner popped up. A very neat accident, if I do say so myself. Now this one I loved. Did you know matchsticks were initially called friction lights? Or at least that's how their inventor, a chemist named John Walker, called them back in 1826. He scraped a stick coated in chemicals across his hearth totally by accident one day and realized that they ignited and created a spark. Initially made out of cardboard, they were then made using wooden splints and sandpaper. Back in the 1940s, a man named Harry Coover stumbled upon a chemical formulation that seemed to stick to everything it touched. The scientific community at the time didn't look much into it as the formula didn't seem to have many applications back then. It wasn't until 1951 that he looked a bit more into the formula and decided to repurpose it. Along with a fellow Eastman Kodak researcher named Fred Joyner, they gave it a proper full name. But you must know it by the shorter version, Super Glue. It also has many uses in security these days that it's hard to believe that we didn't come up with this one on purpose. Back in 1903, a scientist named Edward Benedictus knocked over a flask by accident. He looked down and was amazed to see that the glassware had just slightly cracked but maintained its shape. He was expecting it to break into a million tiny pieces. Curious about this hidden feature, he looked into it and figured out what was keeping the glass together was a substance coating the inside of the glass. Ta-da! That's how humanity came up with safety glass. There's nothing better than a nice piece of buttered toast for breakfast, if we're not counting hot fudge sundaes. But if you find it harder to spread out cold butter over your toast, here's an idea. Use a cheese grater. Figure out the amount you need and grate the product. The process will also soften the butter, making it easier to spread, and you won't have to melt a too large amount of it in the process. But still, that hot fudge. Dried pasta comes in all sorts of different shapes and sizes for a reason. That's because each type of pasta goes best with a particular sauce. Pasta shells, for example, are perfect with denser and chunkier sauces. Why? Because the sauce gets inside the shells, making it easier to serve and eat the dish. The ribbed outer surface also helps with covering the shells in the sauce. If you ever end up burning your cookies, ow! you can save them with your trusty grater, too. Just grate off the blackened parts after carefully taking the cookies from the baking tray. But be careful and wait until the cookies have cooled down. Also, if you ruin their shape a bit, you can always dip them in some melted chocolate. Ooh. After the chocolate cools down, you'll have perfectly shaped cookies. Although, after it gets past your lips and beyond, does the shape of the cookie actually matter? Mm, just saying. If you like adding a lot of ingredients to your sandwiches, but don't really appreciate it when the bread gets soggy, there is a way to reduce the amount of moisture. Pick your sliced tomatoes or cucumbers and place them between two paper towels for up to 5 minutes. After that, you can use them. Also, make sure to spread butter, cheese, or sauces like mayo or ketchup onto the bread first. This will help you seal the bread and keep moisture at bay. Some people think that the little white string that you find near an egg yolk needs to be removed before you cook the egg. Well, I'm here to tell you that these strands are called caleza, and you don't actually need to get rid of them. They help keep the yolk in place at the egg center. A caleza is not going to mess up the consistency or the taste of your food, so removing it is completely up to you. Ever notice that most juice boxes come with two flaps, one on each side? Those are actually handles. Manufacturers design the boxes this way to make it easier for us to hold them. This way, we don't end up squeezing the box, making the juice spill out. Now, you don't need to be a baking pro to know that you can use both white and brown sugar in your recipes. But have you ever wondered what the difference between these two is? It turns out that the only thing that sets them apart is that, during production, 
a small amount of molasses is added to the brown sugar. Molasses is basically a sort of syrup you get when processing sugarcane. It's usually removed during the refining process. That's how white sugar is produced. But if some amount of molasses remains in the final product, we end up with brown sugar, with its specific taste and darker hue. It's a good thing. There are a lot of things you can put in your dishwasher apart from your dishes. For example, you can clean such things as your silicone oven mitts or the knobs of some kitchen appliances, like your oven or stove. Some kitchen sponges and reusable towels may be safe to clean in the dishwasher as well. Speaking of kitchen cleaning products, there are a lot of things you can do with dish soap, like degriming your patio furniture. Just add a bit of dish detergent to some warm water and use the solution to wipe down your outdoor furniture with a piece of cloth. Finally, rinse it clean using your garden hose. You can also use dish soap to get rid of greasy stains on your clothes, be it pasta sauce or salad dressings. Hey, sometimes we miss our mouths! So, just apply a little dish detergent to the stain and then rinse with water. Use non-colored soap for lighter clothes. For more difficult stains, let the dish soap sink in for a bit, then throw the piece of clothing in the washer as usual. And think about maybe getting a bib. If none of the methods have helped you organize your closet, and you're still overwhelmed with large piles of clothes, there's a simple way that might be effective. It's called the one-in-one-out rule. That means for every new piece of clothing you buy, you need to get rid of one you already have. That means you'll always be decluttering your space. To make it easier to find something in your closet, good luck! Keep your most used items at eye level. This way they'll be easier to find and pull out when you're in a hurry. Those items that you tend to use less often, like your evening clothes for example, can stay on the shelves above or below your eye level. You can make good use of old spice tins. If you glue some powerful magnets to the inside of the tins, they can double as magnetic shelves. You can use them for all sorts of everyday items, like kitchen pliers, ice cream scoops, mm, or even cutlery. You can also place them on any metallic surface, like your refrigerator door. They'll blend in nicely with your kitchen magnets. Hidden in your laundry room, there's a great tool for picking up pet hair. It sometimes works better than lint rollers. Take a dryer sheet and, using some elbow grease, you'll get rid of that dog or cat hair in no time. It works on all sorts of surfaces, but it's especially effective for upholstered furniture. Now, if you don't like it when a door starts squeaking whenever you enter a room, get a bar of soap and rub it straight on the hinges. This will only help for a while, though, but it'll do the trick until you manage to get to a hardware store. And, you know, buy some oil. Have you ever noticed that in some elevators, there's a star next to the number of a specific floor? No, it's not to indicate where my office is. (laughs) It's there to point out where the nearest exit is. And it's not always on the first floor. It's most likely located on the floor closest to the street. Have you ever wondered why stop signs are red? Well, back in the day, they didn't actually have any particular color at all. Before the 1920s, they didn't even have a standardized shape. In 1922, though, someone came up with the octagon. But initially, it was painted yellow. All because the red coloring tended to fade out too quickly because of sun exposure. So yellow turned out to be the best option. It took another 30 years for fade-resistant enamel paint to be invented. We ended up changing the color of the stop sign back to red. After all, it's still the best color if you want something to be easily noticeable. Do you know there's a type of rose that can grow taller than people? According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the tallest rose bush ever found grew in Vienna, Austria. It was a staggering 28 and a half feet tall. Yes, it arose to a great height. In the same way we all have unique patterns on our fingerprints, no two tigers have the same set of stripes. It makes it easier for people working with this feline species to distinguish one tiger from another. I'll bet you didn't know the White House has its own flower shop hidden in the basement of the building. It's supposed to provide flower arrangements for all sorts of events that take place there. It's probably no surprise that pizza has become an American staple dish despite its Italian origin. 
People in the U.S. love it so much that they buy 350 slices of pizza every second in the States. Man, I'm not getting my fair share. To manage the huge demand for this delicious dish, around 17% of all restaurants in the U.S. are pizzerias. Finally, there's a way to make lemon juice without the seeds getting into your beverage. Try cutting the fruit in two and squeezing it with a pair of kitchen tongs. The pointed end of the lemon should be facing down. The juice will flow down, but the seeds will remain inside the lemon. Ooh, lemonade. It goes well with pizza. If you ever find yourself stuck in the trunk of your car, stay calm. All cars are supposed to be equipped with an emergency latch to help open the trunk from the inside in the unlikely case it happens. These latches are so well thought out that they can be opened by people of all ages. More so, handles are designed to glow in the dark, too. You can even pull them with the mouth if there's not enough wiggle room to use your hands. Never mind how you ended up in the trunk in the first place. Moving on. If you're ever working with needle and thread, remember you don't need to stick the needle directly into the spool. You may end up losing the needle altogether. Not to mention you can easily hurt your fingers. A lot of modern sewing kits these days come with a designated place for safeguarding the needles. It's located at the bottom part of the thread spool. You'll just need to pull it out. It's even made to hold multiple sewing needles at a time. Disposable ballpoint pens come with a little secret of their own. Did you ever notice that in some of them, there's a small hole in the plastic part? It's actually a rudimentary ventilation system. It's supposed to let the ink easily make it to the tip of the pen. Okay, I know it's in the name. But you really don't need to shake the seasoning shaker to get any product out. Don't believe me? Hey, you're not the only one. Go grab your favorite seasoning bottle out of your pantry. If it has one of those removable plastic caps, it's perfect for the experiment. Instead of shaking the bottle, try holding it from the plastic cap while it's upside down. Now gently twist the bottle from side to side and, before you know it, you get some gorgeously flowing seasoning without having to wiggle the shaker and make a mess all over the stove. On the same note, hmm, most salt and pepper shakers should have ridges on the bottom of the glass portion. In case you get any seasoning stuck in there, place the bottom of the salt shaker against the bottom of the pepper shaker and wiggle it around so the ridges click with each other. The seasoning should easily pour out now without you having to open the bottle. In colder weather, you often have so many clothing layers on you that you can hardly feel the purse or back straps on your shoulder anymore. Not to mention how fast they can slide off. Some jackets come with a built-in solution for that, in the form of a small tab on the shoulder with either a hook or a button. It's meant to be opened and closed comfortably, so you can keep your purse in place at any time. You're most likely using it merely to peel the skin of potatoes, carrots, or cucumbers. But you can use your vegetable peeler for chopping fine strips of onion as well. Just cut the onion into quarters vertically and then start slicing. This might also help out with those embarrassing onion tears. Most people miss this one, but should you ever have a closer look at your toothpaste tube, you will surely see some sort of coloring there, either a dot or a block. Colors can vary. They can be black, green, red, or even blue. These color spots are actually meant to help the assembly machines back at the toothpaste factory. They recognize when and where these machines need to cut the toothpaste tubes and proceed to fold them for packaging. For most types of footwear, if there's anything that seems a bit out of place, always know that it's there for a reason. Most manufacturers don't put extra items on shoes just for fun. It would definitely be a waste of time and resources. For footwear, like boots, for example, there's often a small loop at the top back of the shoe. It's there to help you when you need to put the shoe on, since you can quickly pull on it. Plus, you can also hang the shoe somewhere, most likely to dry, since most boots are meant to be worn in the colder weather. Now, I've been guilty at least once of overdressing with a bunch of layers just so I won't need to jam everything in my check-in bag. But does it become a problem when you actually have to get seated? What do you do with your coat or your jacket? Well, have a closer look next time you board a plane on the seat in front of you. The hook that keeps the tray table upright can double as a jacket hook. 
As long as you don't need to have any meals while in the air, you're good to go. Now, most mascaras expire within 3-6 to six months, I'm told, depending on the manufacturer. But you can help speed up that process if you're not careful enough. Continuously pumping the mascara wand, trying to mix in the product, actually pushes more air into the tube. This can make it dry much faster, and you evidently won't get the desired results with it anymore. There's an easy way to check if your mascara is still good enough to use. If you don't hear a popping noise when you take the brush out, you may very well need to go get yourself a new mascara tube. Now, I know we're living in the era of Bluetooth-connected devices, but for better quality sound, they still recommend using headphones that connect via audio jacks. Remember seeing black ridges on those jacks? They aren't there just to make them fit when you plug them into your phone or laptop. Made out of a special insulating material, these bands are meant to guard the wires when sound is being transmitted. Based on the number of bands, you can figure out which end goes where. Some empty space under noodles in a cup doesn't mean the company producing them wants to cheat you out of a full portion. No, no. It's a manner of keeping the noodles intact during their transportation. It also helps with the circulation of hot water that is poured over the products before you can enjoy them. The V-shaped neckline was initially designed to serve a bunch of objectives. First, as a way of prolonging the life of the garment that would maintain its shape over the years. It's also there to fit your head through the shirt in case it needs some stretching. This way, it ensures a snugger grip around the neck. Lastly, it helps absorb sweat in case you're wearing the shirt while exercising. Now, it's not necessarily a custom anymore, but you may have stumbled upon a dinner jacket with an additional mysterious pocket on the right side. Turns out, this pocket was used by men to easily reach their train tickets, since most of them had to travel to work every day. It helped them keep their jacket buttoned up, but also benefited from the use of a pocket. Now it's only added as a decoration, and it doesn't serve an actual purpose anymore. Speaking of things we don't use these days, or at least for their initial purpose, did you know Play-Doh was originally a cleaning product? In the 1920s, the market was in need of a product that could help them wipe the wallpapered areas around coal-burning furnaces. The recipe for what we now know as Play-Doh was thus invented. It was manufactured in white only and was supposed to clean wallpaper by being rolled back and forth over the dirt. It was only later, in the 1940s, that new products for cleaning wallpaper were brought up, and Play-Doh was redirected toward another area of the market. Now, while I enjoy a nice piece of toast for breakfast, isn't it pesky to have to clean out the toaster? Well, not anymore, since I recently found out that toasters have a slide or a panel at the bottom that helps get rid of all those annoying breadcrumbs easily. Now, there used to be a time when you could only have access to video games by inserting cartridges in your console of choice. These tiny objects gave many doctors a lot of headaches. People soon started popping up in hospitals after swallowing small game cartridges, especially the younger generation. Nintendo, the company that manufactures the majority of these devices, had to come up with a creative solution to prevent these accidents. So these days, Nintendo Switch cartridges are purposely coated with specific chemicals that can leave a really bad, bitter taste in the mouth. Not that I'd, you know, recommend you ever try and taste for yourself. Road and construction workers are usually dressed in orange because the bright orange hue is visible even in bad weather. It's the most effective color to attract attention and alert people. No wonder lots of safety jackets and traffic cones are orange as well. The stop sign has an eight-sided shape to help drivers recognize it easily, even if they see it from the back. And when the signs weren't reflective yet, the octagon shape prevented drivers from confusing the stop sign with any other at night. The rumble strips on the side of the road are placed there to alert drivers who doze off behind the wheel. When their tires move over these strips, the noise and vibration work like an alarm clock. There are magnetic locks on fuel hoses at gas stations. They come in handy if someone drives away with the gas nozzle still attached to their car. In this case, the lock detaches the hose automatically. Oh, that's embarrassing. Gasoline looks like a rainbow in a puddle because it can't mix with water. It forms a thin membrane over it. When light reflects from it, 
and the water at the same time, you've got a rainbow. A triple handle on a jerry can is there to make it easier for two people to carry it and distribute fuel evenly. Gas cans often have a second hole that actually needs to be uncapped too before you pour the gas. The air passage will prevent it from pouring out, so no more fuel waste. Most gas cans have two holes with caps, a bigger and a smaller one. You're supposed to uncap the smaller hole before pouring gas inside the bigger one. It'll prevent the liquid from glugging and spilling all over your clothes and the ground. Another little thingy we often neglect is a point on an ointment cap. Most tubes are usually sealed with a plastic film or a foil, and opening it with your fingernails isn't the best idea. A point easily opens even the most safely sealed tube. You can use most screwdrivers together with a wrench to create more torque. Just place the wrench over the handle of the screwdriver. This way, you'll need to apply a lot less force than before. You'll also be able to get to hard-to-reach areas more easily. They install cameras in shops, banks, and hospitals to monitor everything. If something happens, you can call the police or rescuers. The camera really helps to solve a lot of problems. Why are there no cameras on planes? The crew keep order on the plane, but they won't be able to do anything if something serious happens. Besides, there's nowhere to run on the plane. During the flight, the cameras are useless, and after the flight, the words of the passengers work ideally instead of cameras. So, if cameras do no good, then why spend money on them? Water is great at cleaning stuff because it has triangular molecules. They're made of one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms, um, H2O. Such molecules have slightly different charges on their opposite sides, pretty much like magnets. That's why water easily sticks to other molecules, including those that make up dirt. Lots of private houses have triangular-shaped roofs because this allows rain, snow, and fallen leaves to slide off the slope. If all this stuff piled up on top of your house, one day your roof would collapse. When a storm is coming, clouds seem to turn dark, but it's just an illusion. Thin clouds on a sunny day let the light through easily. They also scatter all the colors of the light spectrum. This makes us perceive the clouds as white, but the thicker the clouds are and the more water droplets they contain, the less light they let through and the darker they look. A good doorknob is the one made of brass, bronze, or some copper alloys. These metals have an anti-germ effect. Bacteria spread way slower on them. They also get rid of germs pretty fast, within a couple of hours. Nope, it doesn't mean you don't have to wash your hands. Diamonds have such symmetrical shape to show you their brilliance. Initially, the gems aren't so beautiful. They go through several stages of cutting and then become pieces of elegance. Most of these stones have a round shape with slightly pointed corners. Diamonds shine the brightest in this shape. Why are there two holes in the socket? The left hole is neutral, the right hole is not, and the gap underneath is ground. Electricity needs to flow through the chain. The current flows from the hot slot, passes through your phone charger, for example, and then goes through the neutral hole. Ever wondered what that small pocket on your jeans is for? People used to wear watches on chains. That small pocket was meant for it. Now, almost no one wears such a watch, but the pocket remains. You can still keep something small in there, like a ring. In London, there are some poles that look like street lamps, but there are no bulbs. Well, their official name is stink pipes, and they're a thing of the past now, but they used to come in handy back in the 19th century. These hollow poles would vent away the air and explosive gases with bad smells to prevent, shall we say, unwanted consequences. Most kitchen shears have metal plier-like teeth in the middle. Between the handle grips, they can help you crack nuts, crab shells, and other tough products. You can also open jars and bottles or remove herb stems with their help. Leather often looks dull to the eye because it's covered with itsy bitsy scratches and scrapes. They scatter the light that hits the material. When you coat your shoes in a layer of wax, you fill these tiny crevices. The surface becomes smoother and the rays of light bounce off it more evenly. That's why the leather looks shiny. Highlighters are filled with a special semi-transparent fluorescent ink that can glow in dim light. Yellow and light green hues are the most popular because they don't prevent you from seeing the text after black and white photocopying. 
Photocopiers perceive yellow and light green marks as very pale and don't print them. They make magnets shaped as a horseshoe because this increases the magnetic force. Colors matter too. The blue part indicates the south pole, the red part, the north pole. The two poles work simultaneously and increase the attraction force. The dime-sized holes in elevator doors is actually a keyhole. If the doors get stuck, an operator can open them manually thanks to this hole. They'll just insert a special key. The tiny hole in the airplane window is there to balance air pressure. The window has three layers. The outer pane is extremely sturdy. It can withstand air pressure differences during takeoff and landing. The inner pane, which is the closest to you, is made of cheaper materials. It prevents potential damage to the window. The hole itself is in the middle pane. It not only balances the pressure, but also prevents the window from fogging. Escalator brushes are there for your safety. They don't allow you to come too close to the edge of the escalator. This way, your clothes won't end up between the steps. You see the sun as yellow or orange. Because the atmosphere of our planet scatters such colors as blue, green, and violet. This is also why the sun looks warmer at sunrise and sunset. Go shopping for some oranges and I'm sure you'll get them in a red mesh bag. You'll rarely see them lying around without one of those. It's pure marketing and that color isn't a random choice. When packed in a red mesh bag, oranges appear more orange, fresher, and more appealing to you. So you're more likely to buy them, right? Lemons are usually sold in green mesh bags for a similar reason. If you pack them in red, they'll appear more orange. Green goes better with yellow and makes those lemons stand out. Mattress manufacturers make a limited number of different mattresses, and the only way to make them look different is to come up with a fancy stitching pattern. Two mattresses of two different companies might be the exact same quality, but cost differently. Most people will never know it and will decide that different patterns mean something in terms of quality. So, when shopping, don't mind the pattern at all. Almost all hotels have white bed sheets. They choose this color specifically to show how high their standards of cleanliness are. The whiter and brighter the sheets are, the more luxurious the hotel seems. It's much easier to see dirt and stains on white linen. It's like proof that you've checked into a clean room. Crackers have holes in them to stop them cracking and breaking during baking. If the holes weren't there, steam would build up inside the cracker and make it collapse. Take a look at a soda bottle and you'll notice a disc inside the bottle cap. This helps seal in the liquid and the drinks fizz, stopping it from going flat. The long neck on your soda bottle is designed like that to encourage you to hold it there. That way, the heat from your hand will only warm that top bit of the bottle instead of heating up your whole drink. It's always hard to see your food in the microwave because of that pesky black grate on the window, but it's there to stop harmful microwaves from escaping. Called the Faraday Shield, it protects you as well as ensures that your food cooks properly. Food items like chips come with about 43% nitrogen inside their package. It might seem like they sell you half a bag of air, but it's exactly the opposite. Oxygen, the gas we breathe, would react with the chips inside the bag and make them go rancid quickly. It's called oxidizing for a reason. Nitrogen, on the other hand, is an inert gas that helps keep the foodstuffs fresh and also protects them from breaking during transportation. A bag of chips that has this gas cushion lets you enjoy your crunchies without them turning to potato crumbs. Donuts have holes in them so that the inside and outside cook evenly. Before the holes were added, the inside would often be greasy and doughy while the outside was crisp. Margins on paper aren't for writing in dates and numbering lists. They were originally added to serve a protective function. Back in the day, rats used to be a pesky problem in people's homes and paper was one of their favorite snacks. Margins were added as a safeguard so that the rats would nibble on blank paper rather than taking a bite out of your important work. That hole in your hollow lollipop stick isn't to prevent choking should it ever be swallowed. It's actually there to keep the candy in place. Excess candy flows into the hollow tube and the hole, which when it hardens, keeps the pop in place. If it was a smooth stick, the candy would slide off easily. Vacuums come with so many attachments, 
But do any of us really know what that one with long bristles is for? It's for dusting and is perfect for cleaning framed art, blinds, and lampshades. What's the difference between a wooden hanger and a plastic one? Aside from helping keep your clothes in shape, cedar wood hangers also repel moths and bugs. Salt isn't just used for cooking. It can get rid of tough smells. Rubbing salt on your fingertips after chopping garlic should remove the smell. It also works on shoes. Toasters have a secret slide in the bottom that can be removed, so you can clean out all those annoying breadcrumbs. If you ever had problems with popping chocolates from the box, look at those little holes around them. They're there to help you. If you push a hole right next to the candy, it'll jump out easily. When you take a sip from a coffee cup with a lid, it decreases air pressure inside the cup, so air tries to get in. The tiny hole on the lid allows air to enter that way, so liquid can smoothly pour out the main hole. More on beverage lids. The small button on them let restaurant workers, and customers too, understand what's in a cup. Near each button, there's a name. Just look at which one is pushed down. The numbers on the fruit stickers tell you how exactly they were grown. If there are four digits and the first is four or three, the fruit has been sprayed with pesticides. If there are five digits and the first is nine, the fruit has been grown organically. If there are five digits and the first is eight, the fruit has been genetically modified. When you're on your way back to the car after bagging up everything you bought, use loops on a shopping cart to hang the bags. Now softer items like bread, eggs, fruit and veggies won't get squashed by the heavier goods. If you don't have anyone to hold the other end of your tape measure when you try to measure something, tap a nail on it. Now simply hook your tape on it using the tiny hole all tape measures have. The square-shaped spoon that goes with a McFlurry helps to mix the ice cream toppings through the dessert. The spoon hooks directly to a machine and spins around. Padlocks that are used outside quickly get out of order because of rain. See this little hole in the bottom? It's made for pouring engine oil inside. Do this and the key will again turn in the lock without any difficulty. You keep banging the bottom of a glass ketchup jar, but nothing's coming out. Here's a little tip. Turn your ketchup bottle at an angle and tap on the middle of the neck. In many fast food restaurants, customers fill tiny folded paper cups to get a portion of ketchup or mustard. Here's the news. The cups are supposed to unfold and turn into small paper platters to hold a great deal more sauce. That little hole on the handle of a pot or a frying pan isn't just for hanging them on the wall. During cooking, put the end of your utensil in the hole, and it'll be propped over the pot to save your kitchen from extra mess. The blue or any other dark color bristles on your toothbrush are meant to remind you when it's time to get a new one. If you see that bristles have become pale, change the toothbrush or its head. An extra hole at the upper part of the sink has multiple hidden functions. First, in case someone forgets to close the tap, the water won't overflow and the bathroom won't get flooded. Second, thanks to that hole, the water drains faster as it gives an escape for the air, helping the water flow down. Most metallic zippers have a hidden lock inside them to save you from awkward situations, such as an undone fly. Don't leave the zipper handle in an upward position. When you pull it downwards, it automatically locks. It's all thanks to those tiny grooves hidden underneath the handle. Spoiled milk emits gases, like most foods when they go off. A classic plastic milk jug has a concave shape on one side. So when the gases expand inside the jug, it expands too, and the concave shape curves out. Also, if you want to save some milk for later and freeze it, the jug will expand when the milk gets solid as well, occupying more space in a jug. Bath foam isn't only for fun or a nice smell. It also helps regulate the temperature. The bubbles keep the water hot, so you can enjoy a bath a bit longer. Anyway, it works for acrylic bathtubs only. Those made of metal lose heat really fast either way.
Many cups and mugs have little grooves on the bottom on purpose. They're designed for washing machines. The grooves let the water flow and not spill over your feet when you take the cup out. Also, those grooves let the air flow so the cup doesn't crack even if the tea is scalding. A point on an ointment cap is there for a reason too. Most tubes are usually sealed with foil and it's better to avoid opening it with fingers unless you're ready to say goodbye to your nails. A point easily opens even the most safely sealed tube. Escalator brushes aren't for keeping your shoes clean and polished. It might be tough to apply wax right on that brush while the escalator's on the move. It's for your safety. Brushes won't let you come close to the edge, so a long coat or boot-cut jeans won't end up in between the steps. All Tic Tac containers are designed to dispense one Tic Tac every time you open it. The lid has the same shape as the candy. Turn the container upside down, gently shake it, and slowly open it. You'll notice only one candy stuck between those lid grooves. So, if you just open the container and shake it until five or even more candies fall into your mouth, it means you've been eating Tic Tacs wrong all this time. The pom-pom on top of your beanie wasn't put there as a fashion accessory. The pom-pom was originally added to the hat to prevent sailors from banging their heads on the ceilings of the ships that were too low. Over 40 billion Oreos are made every single year. It's the world's most popular manufactured cookie. The geometric design stamped into these cookies has the Nabisco logo, the symbol of European quality, surrounding the word Oreo. William Turnier created the chocolate cookie design we see today back in 1952. Headphone jacks might become a thing of the past because of wireless technology, but if you've seen one, you might have noticed the rings at the base of the plug. One ring means single sound playback, two rings represent stereo sound in the left and right ear, while three rings means you've got stereo and a microphone built in. Now, the iconic orange, red, purple, yellow, and lime green rings of Fruit Loops hide a deep secret within. They don't represent different fruit flavors. All those rings are the same fruit flavors blended together. The colors are just for show. Mm. The E in Dell's logo is at an angle because the founder, Michael Dell, wanted his technology to turn the world on its ear. A compass uses magnets to point to the magnetic North Pole. But it's not really north at all. The north pole of a compass magnet points toward the north because the north and south attract. Earth's south magnetic pole is near the geographic north, while the north pole is near Earth's geographic south. Confusing, isn't it? Those little red spots you sometimes see after you crack an egg are nothing to be worried about. Tiny blood spots can be caused by a small rupture in the blood vessel of the hen as it was laying the egg. Eggs with these blood spots are safe to eat, but that spot can be removed if you want. It won't affect the taste of the egg. That's comforting. Ketchup is a word taken from many cultures, like Chinese, Malay, and Indonesian. It originally meant a pickled fish sauce. Catsup is also an acceptable spelling used. However, ketchup is the most popular way it's spelled these days. Airbnb's logo isn't a bent paperclip, as it may seem to be. Bello, as it's called, for belonging, means more than that. There's a person's head, the location symbol, and a heart for love. All joined together, they make Airbnb's iconic A and symbol of togetherness. E120, or Natural Red 4 Food Coloring, aka Carmine, is made from tiny beetles. It's been used to color anything from cakes to candy to even drinks. The shine on candy also comes from bugs. This time, it's the Indian female lac bug. The beetle leaves behind a substance that is scraped from the trees to be formed into dry shellac that gives that glossy look. The Mozilla Firefox logo isn't a fox at all surrounding the planet. It's a red panda instead. The name Firefox is the English translation of its Chinese name. Those maintenance covers in the street are round for safety reasons. In past civilizations, like ancient Rome, manholes, that's what they were called back then, were square-shaped slabs of stone. Unfortunately, these were prone to accidents. If they weren't placed properly, a square cover could slip through the square hole diagonally. Ow! 
Replacing a round cover eliminated this problem. A circle cover won't slip inside because there are no angles. A tomato isn't technically a vegetable, but a fruit. Banana trees aren't related to palm trees or trees at all. They're herbs. Banana is considered an herb because it never builds a woody trunk the way a tree does. Instead, it forms a succulent stalk, like lemongrass or its cousin, ginger. You can call them berries as well. The Golden Gate Bridge color wasn't meant to be the orangey-red that it is today. The bridge's original color was suggested to be many other colors, such as black with yellow stripes or even candy cane to make it visible for passing ships and aircraft, especially in the frequent San Francisco fog. But when the steel arrived covered in an orange primer to protect it from rust, the architect preferred the international orange color, and it stuck. Those legs on the back of keyboards aren't an ergonomic design to help your wrists sit better. Using the legs out for too long can tire and hurt your wrists, plus slowing your typing down. The hinge legs are just there to help you see the letters and numbers better if you don't know how to touch type. The color of a chili pepper reveals nothing about its taste or heat. The smaller a chili is, the hotter it'll usually be. The heat doesn't come from the seeds, as believed, but the white membranes that hold them. Hidden within the Toblerone logo of the mountain is the image of a bear standing on its hind legs about to eat that yodeler over there. No, not really. This is because bears are a big part of Bern, one of the biggest cities in Switzerland where the founder created the Triangle Chocolate Treat. Toblerone is also a play on the founder's family name, Tobler, and the Italian word Torone for honey and almond nougat. The space below a cup of noodles is there to protect the noodles during transport. This technique is called a middle suspension. Not only are they protected better in their styrofoam cup, but it also helps those noodles soften more evenly and quickly. Now, even though you might have thought that the hole in the barrel of a ballpoint pen had no purpose, it does. It's called a venting system, which helps the ink flow more smoothly. This way, an even amount of air pressure is created inside and outside the pen, allowing the ink to flow into the point easily. One of the most recognized logos in the cycling world has a hidden item in its famous logo. Inside the Tour de France name, a cyclist hides in the O, U, and R. Those metal brackets on the top of the nozzles in gas stations have a unique design put into place in case of accidents. If a dodo accidentally forgets the nozzle is still inside the gas tank and starts driving away, the magnetic brackets separate without damaging any part of the gas pump. Wendy's logo is designed off of the daughter of creator Dave Thomas. It's also named after her nickname, but there is more to the logo than that. Wendy's collar spells out the word mom. While unintentional, it became something to mean a homey feel more than any other restaurant out there. Finding the right lane to be in while driving for your exit can sometimes be confusing, especially in a foreign country. Pay attention to the side of the road that exit signs are located. It'll be the lane you need to be in. Some toothpaste has a little seal on them that needs to be removed before you can use them. Instead of peeling back the foil layer, the toothpaste lid has a little spike on the top just for this reason. Tostitos have a secret symbol hidden right in the middle of their name. The two T's in the middle of the logo resemble two people enjoying Tostitos over a bowl of salsa. The salsa bowl is in red and forms the dot in the eye. One of the most recognizable figures in the world, the Statue of Liberty, for 16 years, functioned as a fully operational lighthouse. However, the light was barely visible, even from Manhattan. In 1901, it was eventually decommissioned as a lighthouse. Tourists could even visit the torch for a stunning view of the city. But an accident damaged the Statue of Liberty's torch in 1916, and it's been closed to the public ever since. The do not remove under penalty of law tag on mattresses isn't put there for the consumer or void your warranty either if you do remove them. In the 1900s, manufacturers used to create the filling with basically anything. Animal hair, old hospital beds, or clothing. It didn't matter at the time. 
Strict laws created the tags to stop recycled materials from being used and sold as new. Good thing! Toyota's symbol is more than just some random rings combined. The three overlapping ovals symbolize the merge of the hearts of consumers and Toyota together. A California sushi roll is made of seaweed, rice, cucumber, avocado, and crab meat. But it's not crab meat at all. Surimi is an imitation crab meat. It's made of white fish blended with sugar instead of crustaceans. The fish mixture is then heated and pressed into shape. The logo for Beats is just a lowercase b inside of a red circle. The circle represents a human head, with the b being the headphones in their shape. All those little black dots around the edges of car windows are called frits. A frit is a painted black enamel that's put into windshields during manufacturing. They block ultraviolet rays and help distribute temperatures between the metal and glass. There are 24 symbols hidden inside the Unilever logo. Let's count, shall we? The sun, dove, plant, spark, chili pepper, spoon, bowl, flower, ice cream, mm, hand, hair, lips, swirl, fish, clothes, bee, particles, packaging, transformation, waves, DNA, palm trees, heart, and virtuous cycle, whatever that is. These represent everything that the company believes in and produces. DNA? Bobby pins are designed so that the zigzag part goes onto your scalp, not the flat part. It gives a greater grip on the hair and skin, making the pin stay in longer. The story that the pins were named after those fashionable London constables called Bobbies is not true. I made it up. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our special guest today, the garbage bag. Canadian inventors created this irreplaceable household item about 70 years ago. Today, it comes in a huge variety of shapes, colors, and sizes. And if you think it can only serve one basic purpose, I have a big surprise for you. It can even prevent you from unwanted communication, but more on that later. What if I told you that you've been using your garbage bags wrong your entire life? If you take a closer look at it, you'll probably notice that the seam is inside out, and it's not by accident. In fact, you're not supposed to shake up the bag to open it. You gotta place the bag over a garbage can like a hat, and then just push the middle of the bag down to the cane. No worries, wow. you're not the only person who didn't know that. This eye-opening trick went viral online and got millions of views. Imagine that you need to dye your hair, paint walls, or mold a clay mug immediately, but you don't have a protective suit on hand. Here comes the good news. You can make one out of a plastic bag. It will take you less than a minute. Just find a bag wide enough to fit your torso. Cut one hole in the bottom of the bag for your head and make two holes for the arms on the sides. Voila, feel free to make a hat from another plastic bag to protect your hair. When the job is done, you can wash this handmade suit and reuse it. Our next hack is for those who don't like to waste money. You can use a real plastic bag instead of a raincoat that looks like a plastic bag anyway. Just make a round cut for your face and you're ready to go. You can reuse it as many times as you want. You can use a plastic bottle to create a recycled bag dispenser. Take a large bottle. It can be either a bottle of soda or washing gel. What matters is its shape. It must be straight so you can easily store bags inside it. Wash the bottle, dry it, and cut off the bottleneck and bottom. Turn it upside down. There you go. Your bag dispenser is ready. You can use your imagination to paint and decorate your DIY project with stickers and lettering to your taste. When the design is ready, attach it to the back of the bottle and stick this holder to the wall in your kitchen or one of the cabinet doors. Imagine you've been planning a perfect hiking weekend for ages. But when you actually get there, it starts raining. Don't rush back home. Plastic bags will serve you well if you need to put your clothes or equipment on wet grass. Also, you can make an emergency sleeping bag cover using a large garbage bag. After the rain, it will serve as a nice mattress to lay under your sleeping bag to protect it from moisture and provide an additional layer for a cozy nap. Just fill the bag with some soft leaves and straw that lie on the ground, and there you go! A large garbage bag can be your best friend when you're camping with friends somewhere in the wild. You can turn it into a temporary handmade shower, toilet, or even a dressing room out of it. Just hang it on the tree and no one will spy on you. If you went for a walk wearing a pair of your favorite shoes that get wet easily, here's an easy tip to keep your socks dry. 
Put plastic bags over your socks. Tuck the edges of the bags into your socks or trousers, and then put your shoes on. There's one obvious drawback, though. Feet can slip inside the shoes, so be careful. These plastic socks are also handy when you're trying to put on tight jeans that usually make your feet stick inside them. Have you ever had your bag torn at the worst possible moment? A plastic bag with handles can become an emergency backpack. Just place your stuff inside the bag, put your hands through the handlers, and you're ready to go. A garbage bag is also a good material for book covers. You can reuse multicolored bags to create a unique pattern for your favorites. You're moving to a new house and packing all your belongings. Suddenly, you run out of boxes. Sounds familiar. No problem. Grab a package of large garbage bags and pack the remaining stuff. Unlike boxes, this packaging will protect your property from rain or snow. Garbage bags are especially good for packing blankets, pillows, and stuffed toys. If you need to make a vacuum packing for your clothes or stuffed toys, simply put your belongings in a trash bag, place a tube from your vacuum cleaner inside the bag, and then turn it on. The vacuum cleaner will remove all your excess hair from the bag, and you'll save space in your suitcase or basement. Someone really special has invited you home to cook a romantic dinner together. Finally, you want to show all your extraordinary cooking skills. But your special someone doesn't have an apron, and you don't want to mess up your new outfit. No worries. Make an emergency apron using a large garbage bag. It will surprise that special someone even more. Speaking of stylish outfits, are you familiar with the term garbage bag dress? Celebrities and famous fashion brands shock the audience with outfits looking like trash bags from time to time. Some of them actually make outfits using garbage bags like fabric. It's a popular option for young artists who can't afford to buy and use expensive fabrics. Garbage bags are very flexible, so they are a useful material for making patterns for future outfits. When it comes to garbage bags, the DIY project's possibilities are almost infinite. People use bags to make lampshades, clothes covers, small cosmetic bags, makeup organizers, recycled glasses, and whatnot. Some even weave baskets, bags, and floor rugs out of them. It's pretty easy to handcraft a rug. You need to cut several bags into equal strips and weave a long braid from these strips. Now twist this braid into a spiral and tie or glue each layer together. To secure this entire construction from breaking, you can screw your rug on a sewing machine from the middle to the edges, as if you're drawing a star. This plastic braid can also serve as emergency laces, a rope, or a handmade ribbon for decorating gifts and flowers. Filmmaking is another yield where garbage bags can be real stars. If you're shooting indoors and the sunlight is too sharp, you can put white garbage bags on all windows to diffuse the light or to set the white balance. Black light-proof garbage bags may serve you as a shading curtain to get rid of the sunlight in the room whatsoever. Feel free to use a white bag to create a diffuse light bulb. Inflate the bag like a balloon and put it next to a lamp, but make sure to use a LED light so it doesn't get too hot. Everyone knows that touching a plastic bag with a hot iron is a bad idea because it will melt. But this lets us create unique shapes from this colorful and affordable material. Want to make a unique designer vase? Take a bowl and cover it with paper tightly. Then wrap the matching strips of plastic bag around the bowl. Now place another layer of paper on the top and gently iron over the entire surface of the bowl. Voila! The plastic's melted and you got a new stylish and eco-friendly vase. Garbage bags can produce very cool sound effects. If you live in a desert where it never rains and need to recreate that relaxing sound, use a plastic bag. It's always better to speak up like an adult, but if that doesn't work for you, here's a quick fix. Next time some annoying person calls you, don't bother to make excuses why you can't talk right now. Just grab a garbage bag and rustle it into your phone speaker yelling, Hello? Hello? I can't hear you! Confession time! Have you ever used this trick? Each airplane carrying over 19 passengers must have a crash axe. You will see it installed as a firefighting device. That way, if there's an electrical fire, crew members can cut away the cockpit or some other panels. The pilots can actually break the windscreen if something bad happens and people need to evacuate. Passenger planes are mostly white to protect them from solar radiation and its effects. Aircrafts need to remain cool at airports in particularly hot countries while passengers are going in or out. Brilliant white paint can bounce the sunlight back. 
It also protects some parts of the plane that are made of composite materials and prevents their damage since there's higher ultraviolet radiation at high altitudes. Commercial planes must get to speeds of at least 155 miles per hour to achieve stability and safety at takeoff. Some smaller planes can sustain altitude even at speeds of 30 miles per hour. But when speeds are that low, the plane can easily get destabilized and could even fail the takeoff. The white trails that planes leave behind, also known as contrails, are created because of water vapor. Vapor is produced during the combustion of fuel in plane engines. When the plane reaches its cruising altitude of 32,800 feet, temperatures get quite low. About negative 67 degrees Fahrenheit, it's really cold. So, the water turns into particles of ice. How long these particles are going to remain visible mostly depends on humidity. The higher the level of humidity is, the bigger those trails get and remain visible even long after the plane has disappeared. Airplanes all over the globe get struck by lightning almost on a daily basis. A regular airplane in commercial service gets hit on average once a year. How often it happens depends on a couple of things. First, how many landings and takeoffs the plane performs since lightning mostly strikes at heights between 5,000 and 15,000 feet. It also depends on location. For instance, it's more likely for a plane to get struck by lightning around the equator and in some other parts of the world. Modern planes are designed to withstand such strikes they have to go through special lightning tests to prove they can cope with strikes. Planes mostly fly at altitudes of up to 7 miles. There are some benefits like the thinner air or producing less aerodynamic drag, which also means less fuel consumption. The temperatures up there are lower, which makes the jet engines more efficient. That part of the atmosphere is also less turbulent, which helps make flights smoother. Some planes have already gone into space, but not the ones you see at the airport. Those classical planes need air to go up, and space is basically just a vacuum. The first plane that reached space was designed around 70 years ago. During its first flight, it generated lift and stability using its thin, stubby wings. It traveled more than five times the speed of sound. There are at least one sextillion planets out there in our universe. To give you an idea of how huge this number is, our planet weighs almost one sextillion times more than some animals like a bear. None of these planets are cubic, triangular, or any other shape. They're all round. At its beginnings, a planet is just a cloud of dust and rocks that rotates around a central star. Dust and small pieces attract each other because of gravity, and they keep doing it until they form a blob. Now, the blob starts attracting more matter. It grows and gets bigger until it's done with collecting everything in its path. Gravitational forces work equally in all directions, so that blob gets a round shape. But not the perfect one. Our planet, for instance, is almost a sphere, but with a bulge in the middle. The bulge is there because the Earth is spinning. Every time it rotates on its axis, the middle part travels further than the top. The area at the equator is moving quicker than the area at the poles. And the faster you spin something, the more you'll throw it outwards. Sound will travel four times faster in water than in air. It's a wave and that's why it moves faster in a denser substance. Particles that are close to each other, as in denser substances, will bump into each other more easily. Water is denser. There are 800 times more particles in a bottle of water than in the same sized bottle filled with air. Bubbles are round because they occur in a thin film, such as one of soapy water traps air. The molecules in the film attract each other. That way, they stick together and also shape a sphere because that's the smallest possible area that encloses any given volume. They can't get any smaller because they have trapped air inside. You can turn your pencil into a diamond. If you apply a temperature of 2,550 degrees Fahrenheit and pressure of 55,000 atmospheres, you can transform graphite into diamond. 
There are actually two variations of a single chemical element, carbon. Diamonds aren't just used in jewelry, but for different purposes. For example, as a cutting tool for electronic devices. Beavers are amazing builders capable of creating cool and complex riverside structures. They build them to protect themselves from wild animals that might go after them, like wolves or bears. But not in the way it may look at first. Beavers don't really live in their dams. They only use them as a barrier, making some sort of a pool or pond of deeper water. That's where their real home is, in the pool. It's like a small island or dome lodge. It's a dry area where beavers are safe. They can also store their food there. These pools are deep enough for land animals to avoid them. Beavers dig underwater tunnels that are entrances into their home. If a predator or some other danger is coming, they can quickly escape to safety. Some animals sleep while standing. Zebras, elephants, horses, some birds like flamingos. Cows can sleep while standing, but they prefer to lie down when they want to rest. To sleep while standing, animals need to have legs that can align vertically. That way, they don't have to activate their muscles to keep them standing. Their knees also lock in place. It's better for these animals to sleep while standing because they'd probably be too slow to react if there was a predator going after them. When we laugh in some unpleasant situations, or when we feel nervous, we're actually trying to mask our true emotions. For example, you do something embarrassing and try to cover up the shame you feel. Also, we're more relaxed after laughing. So if you're nervously chuckling in an unpleasant situation, it can help you clear some of your negative emotions. When you buy a bottle of water, you can see it has an expiration date. It's not that the water inside will turn bad. The expiration date is there because the plastic may start to leach into the water over time and contaminate it with chemicals that might be bad for us. The moon has its own time zone. The astronomers created a special watch for all moonwalkers. It measures time in lunations, which is the period of time the moon needs to rotate and revolve around our planet. Each lunation is almost 30,000 Earth days. You can decaffeinate your coffee if you take it into a sauna to moisten the green coffee bean within temperatures of 160 to 210 degrees Fahrenheit. The point is to get 10 milligrams or less of caffeine per one coffee. That's when you can put it in the decaf category. One serving of regular coffee has 50 to 75 milligrams of caffeine. There's a reason the Earth spins. Our solar system formed 4.5 billion years ago. There was a raging cloud of dust and gas. Molecules and atoms in that cloud had a tendency to rotate in a certain direction. That same cloud collapsed under gravitational forces. Gravity magnified its initial rotation and then flattened it out into a disk. Our planet formed within that disk, and now it's spinning because of that old pattern of its parent cloud. Have you ever stopped to think about the thrilling secrets of day-to-day -day modern life on planet Earth? I'm talking about tiny windows and washing machines and little holes in airplane windows. If you haven't got a clue of what I'm talking about, tag along and allow yourself to be as surprised as I was when I found out. Remember the drawer at the bottom of your oven? Maybe you've been ignoring it all along or using it to store pots and pans. Well, even though it can serve this function, that's not the only thing it's there for. The best way to use the bottom drawer is to keep your meal heated while you're waiting to serve it. Genius, right? Talking about secret doors, have you noticed that most washing machines have little flap doors at the bottom too? These doors actually serve as drain traps. It's where all the items that we put to wash together with our jeans and jackets go to. It's a type of collector, let's say, of small items. It stops them from getting into the main drain pipes and clogging them. It saves us hundreds of dollars in repairs each month. Now, who hasn't gone through the confusing task of having to measure how much pasta to cook for one serving? Well, here's the solution. The holes in the center of pasta spoons. They were actually made for measuring the exact amount of dry pasta you need for one serving. 
If you try stuffing wet cooked pasta through it, well, good luck with that. On a similar topic, have you ever wondered why pen caps have holes in them? Maybe you thought it was a design feature to regulate air pressure. But in reality, these holes have a much simpler and more important function – to reduce the risk of choking. Now, lots of people love to bite on their caps, and this tiny hole prevents them from choking in case they accidentally swallow a cap and it gets stuck in their throat. For kitchen lovers, there's a hidden secret right in front of your eyes that can change your life. Think pants. Now think handles. Right, they have holes in them. As it turns out, these holes were designed to hold the spoon you're using for cooking. And instead of dripping sauce all over the stove or your kitchen floor, you can place the spoon in the hole and let it drip the sauce directly back into the pan. Woohoo! Speaking of everyday items, and I was, most doorknobs are made of brass because this material makes them naturally germ-free. Unlike plastic ones, brass doorknobs are kind of magical. They can disinfect themselves without you having to clean them. Neat, right? Have you ever noticed that at the bottom of a measuring tape, there is a little dip? You can find it in that metallic part you need to pull on to measure something. Well, that dip is actually the exact size of a regular nail. It was designed for people to place the tape on top of a nail and use it as a support while they stretch the tape. Well, I can't wait to try it out for myself. As for the margins in your notebook, they were invented to protect people's notes from mice. No, the mice weren't copying your answers for the math quiz. Actually, there were times when people had to cohabitate with rats and mice that often chewed on paper. So, to prevent information from getting completely lost, people created margins. This way, texts were moved closer to the middle of pages and remained unharmed by rodents. Hmm, perhaps this is where to digest information came from. And what about those tiny holes at the bottom of airplane windows? They have an extremely important function of regulating the air pressure inside the cabin. In other words, they help planes fly high up in the sky. Big responsibility, right? By the way, tray tables on an airplane are the germiest places inside the entire cabin. Studies showed that the trays had eight times the amount of germs on the toilet flush button. Now, how about we cut a commercial airplane in half and see what's inside? Well, it would look more or less like this. Rows of seats on top and everything else that needs to be stored at the bottom. I'm talking about passengers' luggage, emergency supplies, parts of the wing system, and so on. Moving on to bowling balls. Yes, I know it's a clumsy transition. Anyway, have you ever wondered what the insides of a bowling ball look like? If you have cut a professional ball in two, you'll see a familiar shape. Look closely, do you see it? Doesn't that look like the logo of Brightside? Anyway, professional bowling balls are different from the ones in your local bowling alley. That's because they're designed to make fancy moves. They actually have some really complex engineering inside. They're shaped to help skilled professionals get more strikes. The weight of professional bowling balls is designed to be projected inward as they travel down the bowling lane. This makes it harder for them to get into the gutters on the sides of the lane. Speaking of balls, let's take a look inside a baseball. To make it light and aerodynamic, producers use several different layers. Starting from the core, we have a cork center enveloped by black rubber. Then there's a layer of red rubber, followed by two or three alternating layers of wool yarn. After that, there's a visible white leather cover and that beautiful red seam on the side, stitching it all together. And what if you had x-ray vision and managed to look inside a human bone? Ooh, spooky! I'd say what calls most attention is this spiderweb-like situation at the center of the bone. In reality, it's a highly condensed and complex structure of nerves that you have inside your bones. Aren't you lucky? Now, I've got a riddle for you. 
What is round can be found near the ocean and looks like an aerial view of the Guggenheim Museum in New York City, the one that's made almost entirely of ramps. If you said a nautilus shell, hey, then you guessed right. A nautilus is a shellfish whose house you can find in countless souvenir stores near the beach. It's made up of two layers, a matte white outer layer and an iridescent white inner layer. And if you were to cut it in half, it would look very similar to the insides of the Guggenheim Museum. Aloe leaves are good for healing purposes and also for hydration. But if you managed to look inside of an aloe leaf, the image you'd see would be satisfying and very relaxing. Who hasn't dreamed of a pool filled with jelly? Now, there seems to be nothing more mundane and regular than a tube of toothpaste. But you wouldn't think so if you cut open a tube that contains several colors. Now, there have been speculations that the insides of such a toothpaste tube might be divided by barriers so that the stripes don't mix. But if you cut it in half, you'll see that it has only one interior chamber. As it happens, there's a lot of science behind the making of striped toothpaste. According to a specialist, they have to ensure that the paste in all the stripes has the same physical properties. This way, the colors are naturally prevented from mixing with one another. That's why, if you tear a tube open, you'll see something that looks like several slices of pizza in different colors. If you open your closet, you're bound to find at least a few wooden hangers. Usually, they're made of cedar wood, which is a natural moth repellent. So, cedar hangers actually protect your clothes from moth infestation. For some people, more than others, eyeliner is an everyday must. Boy, isn't it! But did you know that back in ancient Egyptian times, both men and women used coal eyeliners to protect their eyes from the sun's glare? Way to go for the Egyptians for figuring that out! Now, if I could just learn to walk like one… Normally, we use headrests for the purpose of, well, resting our heads, right? Well, not only. As it turns out, headrests can be easily removed from the seats and used to break car windows in case of emergencies. Now, this one is a trick very few people know about. You probably place your doormat horizontally, like most of us do. But doormats serve the purpose of absorbing dirt from the soles of your shoes before you enter your home. So, for this function to work as it's meant to, the best way to place a doormat is vertically. This way, you take more steps on the top of the doormat before entering your house. And last but not least, now I don't want to be accusatory here, but you have probably been vacuuming your house the wrong way, and I can prove it. Most people just vacuum floors and carpets in one direction or move the brush back and forth several times, thinking they've got all the dust out. But according to cleaning professionals, the best way to vacuum is in rows. First, you go forward with the brush until you arrive at the end of the row. Then, you fluff the carpet up and move back down along the same row, gathering the dust that wasn't collected in the first sweep. Talk about efficient cleaning! On the other hand, my idea of house cleaning is to sweep the room with a glance. Hey, I don't want to disturb that protective layer of dust. Whether it's something as simple as a button on your jeans or something that's part of a larger moving mechanism, here are 26 secrets to everyday things you probably didn't know about. You use doorknobs every day so it's right to be concerned about how many germs could be on them. However, they have made doorknobs out of brass partly for that reason. Brass provides an antimicrobial effect, eliminating the microorganisms that were hoping to start a colony on your doorknob. Your pants have that one-fifth pocket that's recognized as the small useless one. Originally, it was there to provide a safe place for your pocket watch, something that was necessary when first implemented in 1901. It then continued to remain for traditional purposes. However, it's still a great place to put your Tic Tacs. You've probably mistaken those little rivets on your jeans as some form of fashion statement, similar to the small pocket. In fact, they're incredibly important. 
They are there to provide extra support for areas that withstand the most strenuous parts of your clothing, preventing them from embarrassingly falling apart. That little button at the end of your seatbelt seems like it's way out of place. In fact, it's there to ensure your buckle will always remain at the end. So you won't have to awkwardly fiddle with your seatbelt every time you put it on. You're in a new car or a rental, and the gauge tells you the gas is getting low. You don't know which side the fuel cap is on from the inside. It can cause unnecessary effort at the gas station. However, your fuel gauge has an arrow that reminds you which side to fill your gas tank up from. Some models of cars may also have a gas tank hose instead, with the hose pictured on the side that the cap is on. Hiking and walking through snow requires the best kind of footwear. The shoes which are perfect for this also have an extra eyelet for your lace to loop through. Looping your laces through the extra eyelets will give more support for your ankles and feet and will provide more stability as you walk. But as you walk, blisters are also a concern. The sweat in your shoe creates friction between the feet and the shoe, which then helps create the blisters. Antiperspirant that you use for your armpits will help keep the feet from sweating. Just make sure you use the clear one. Cooking for people is always nice. However, sometimes the guests are late. Yep, we're all guilty of that sometimes, right? The extra drawer under your oven where you've been keeping all of your spare pots and pans was actually made to keep your food warm. Great for those who are late to the meal. Ever wondered how long that padlock could possibly last when it's outside, in the rainy weather, keeping your bike safe? It has a little hole at the bottom of it. It's there to drain water to avoid corrosion on the inside. It also serves to provide oil, further prolonging its use. That hole in the elevator door isn't there to check who's inside so you can avoid sharing a ride with specific people. It's a keyhole in case it breaks down. Ketchup, sauce bottles, and all other condiments we love all have a stage when it's difficult to get the insides out. You try hitting it, shaking it, and poking things inside to encourage the tasty condiments to come out. Luckily, there is an easier way to do it. The label at the top suggests where to tap the bottle. The sauce will come out easier and smoother, allowing gravity to take the place of frustration. The purpose of wooden coat hangers is to help repel pesky insects and avoid fungal growth that eats away at your clothing. As it's made of cedar wood, it contains oils that have insecticidal and fungicidal properties and were used as far back as the ancient Egyptians, although they used it for other purposes. We've all been trained and tested at the art of typing and know the correct way to use a keyboard. But you may not have noticed that the F and J keys have a small ridge at the bottom. They're there to help you find your correct starting place with your fingers on the keyboard, without having to look down. If you've been lucky enough to get the window seat on the plane, you would have noticed that little hole at the bottom of the window. It helps with the air pressure on the plane. The window itself is made from acrylic and isn't actually glass, which saves it from fogging up so you can see the scenery on your journey. The windows on planes were originally square, however, they would continuously break from the constant changes in pressure. Round windows are able to evenly distribute the pressure, ensuring you'll have a pleasant journey without falling out. For all you Nintendo Switch players, those who have tried to taste your cartridges will notice they have a bitter taste. The manufacturers added it intentionally, as the Switch's cartridge size is very small and it might be a hazard for the youngest players that have a tendency to put things in their mouth that they shouldn't. So the bitter taste made from denatonium benzoate ensures that they won't be tasted for too long. Cosmetics containers that are filled with products used for your skin have a secret number on them. This is to help inform you how long the product will be usable, ensuring it doesn't cause the reverse effect by damaging your skin instead. Pen lids have a hole at the end of them. It's not there to help your pen breathe and boost performance, but it's there to help you breathe, just in case while you're sitting in class or at work and you're chewing on your lid and just happen to swallow it, you can be rest assured if it's stuck, the pen makers were thinking of you. 
When you're traveling by car or any other form of ground transportation and you're trying to drink your favorite pop from a straw, you'll find it quite difficult to do at times. Simply turn the tab on the can around so that your straw easily fits inside, making it easier to drink out of. There are always spare buttons when buying new clothes, along with a little bit of fabric. It's far too small to repair that crutch part that always rips first. The fabric is actually there for you to test how to wash it, so you don't accidentally ruin your brand new clothes. Determining how much pasta you need just for yourself can be difficult to figure out. Your big spaghetti spoon with the big hole on the inside? That looks like it's there to drain water, is actually there so you can put the uncooked pasta inside before cooking, so you know exactly how much you need. New shoes always come with those strange little packets. That's silica gel. The gels are there to reduce the moisture in the air to avoid any fungal growth while the shoes were waiting to be purchased. There's a lot of chemistry involved to get you that silica, and it's very effective, capable of absorbing 50% of the humidity. So make sure you don't throw it away. Next time you need to dry out your electrical devices, it's a lot easier than using rice. It's difficult enough to see at night whilst driving, but it's even worse when the driver behind you shines their high beams. Your rearview mirror has a tab at the bottom. When you press it, it changes the angle. One is for day driving, the other, well, for nighttime. It'll help in case that one person driving behind you has forgotten to turn off their high beams. Although your screwdriver is ergonomically made for your hand, sometimes you have that one screw that's too hard to loosen up. The handle is also shaped so you can easily fit inside of a ring spanner or wrench, allowing you to apply more force, ensuring that you can remove that troublesome screw. The skirt part on an escalator seems like a good spot to get your foot stuck, but in reality, those long brushes poking out aren't there to give you an extra shine on your shoes. But for safety precautions, to minimize the risk of trapping off